Okay, I can explain. So, Bear Party Adventure is a source mod that was on Steam for some time, but then got removed. I had put this one to a vote a long time ago, and it didn't seem to be highly looked upon. But at this point, I just can't ignore it. Bear Party Adventure is a game that, according to its ModDB page, was released in 2011, but I didn't play it through ModDB. It's listed on there as Bisonors? That's a weird-ass name. But later released on Steam. When? I don't know, as its Steam store page was removed from Steam, but it was free. According to this Kotaku article, it was released on Steam in 2020, and according to a Steam community article removed in September 2021. Luckily, I have it downloaded. So yes, I played Bear Party Adventure, but why was it taken off Steam? Is it a bad game? What does this game have to offer? Without further ado, let's get into this aneurysm to the eyes. This game starts you with spawning as a green bear, completely unrelated to the Care Bears franchise. And I'm sorry, but the way the bear's eyes look around and how their character moves is just so weird to look at in this mirror. I mean, seriously, look at this. Going outside, you can look around your little town to see things like giant treehouse in the center, a giant gate, and just a very pretty and stylized little town. One of the first bears we can talk to is this green one that teaches us how to pick up apples and put them in a bin to collect them. After completing it, we can get this green injection thing that ups our max health a bit. This is a cute little area, but pretty neat. We can also see this red bear at the gate talking to a pink bear, both wondering what's beyond the gate because no one's allowed out. Something funny to note, that all the important bears you need to talk to are different colors, while all the background ones are just pinkish purple. Interesting coloring. So why, if we're a green bear, do we have a pink health icon? Doesn't make sense. Eventually, you can meet the yellow bear who tasks the player to clear up the river duck from a large branch. They urge you to get a flower from the blue bear in the treehouse. The flower is one of the main weapons that works as a melee. While clearing out the river of the branch, we can hear the yellow bear scream that there's invaders in the village. Going back up to the house, we can look out the window and see some evil bears kidnapping our friends and trying to kill us using explosives. After defeating those bears, we can learn from the yellow bear that they suddenly arrived and kidnapped everyone. Why? Well, who knows. But to save them, we need to go on an adventure. A bear party adventure. Yeah, that was a horrible pun. The yellow bear tells us how they used to be an adventure, but those days are long behind them, so they give us their flower crossbow and armor to go off and find the grand wizard in his mountainous domain. Well, off we go. One thing I actually love about this game is the bunny hop mechanic. Just holding the jump mechanic while going forward makes you super fast. Kind of feels like a bug. You can bunny hop past all these areas and run to this house to perform a no-knock raid on a bunch of copyright-free Care Bears. In this house, we can get these eight balls, or Bombs. Yep, they're <laughs> they're just bombs. We can then blow up this room using the bouncy grenades to go and recline the house to progress. After passing through all these houses and cliffside area, we can make it to this entrance to a new area. The mines. Turning the valve, we can open this door and dropkick some more Build-A-Bear rejects. When we enter the mines, we can find this... magic... bong? <laughs> to heal ourselves. But in going forward, we can get to meet this fun little enemy. The bombs. These stupid little things pop out of the ground and roll at you to damage you, then they blow up. They are easily the most annoying enemy throughout the entire game. The next puzzle requires us to turn this valve and jump into the water to go through a door that is on a timer. Then we need to break some boards in this underwater tunnel to climb onto this platform. With that, we can enter the minecart section. For the first bit of it, it feels incredibly slow. But then you get this. Yeah, an on-rail shooter section. And at this point, we only have this stupid crossbow, so this feels almost impossible to hit. After finishing that, we need to run over and press another button that changes the track. After beating the crap out of more of the bears, we can get this. A gut, uh, I mean, a, a toy firearm that shoots like an Uzi. And is also incredibly ineffective. After getting into the second track, we make our way through a new path. This path leads us to a tunnel where we can practically spawn camp the other bears and carts that see our way out. Which, I'd like to say, the music and ambience in this section is actually quite nice. After going farther through this long tunnel, we make our way to this suspicious green wall with a ladder. Then we get to this section. The new mechanic is these things, these mesh nets. These mesh nets are climbable up and down and can move. Going to this house, we can go through the door and display our new climbing abilities. 
And going further, we can find this portion where we use these vines that allow us to climb but give us more range. Using the vines, we can climb in any surface direction, while the mesh nets are only up and down and side to side. Passing through more houses and bear fights, we can find this house to climb over. If you miss it now, you can get this thing later, but getting it now can give you a little bit more fun. That's right, we're talking about a good old shotgun. The shotgun kind of just looks like a squished version of the shotgun from TF2 though. Luckily, with getting the shotgun, we have a head start to the next horde section, where a large group of bears and bombs attack us. We need to hold out and wait for an elevator to come down for us to get to the next section. The elevator leads to the top base of the mountains with snowed in houses that we have to move our way through. Look, there's even an ice cream cone sticking out in this part of the mountain. I just love that little bit of personality they threw in. But jumping down this cavern past some blue bears, we enter a portal to this LSD nightmare. Anyone who's photosensitive, skip to this timestamp. But here's the really trippy tube thing. Anyway, that was a super cool sequence. Warping through, we end up to a floating island with a subtitle asking who enters the Grand Wizard's domain. I mean, just listen to this stupid voice. I forgot to mention it earlier, but yes, every single character shares this voice. This area has a bunch of floating islands, clouds, and rainbows. You can use the rainbows to travel from the clouds to islands, but in doing so, there's a bunch of bears trying to attack you, and you need to get rid of them to open a new portal to get to this next section. Going through this portal, we get to a new area of clouds. This section is another horde section like before. We need to fight all the bears so that we can use this valve to lower the mesh net to climb up to a new portal. Now, you don't need to defeat all the bears here, but it's a real pain in the ass if you don't at least kill like 80% of them. So in turning the valve and going through this gauntlet of needing to jump from the rainbows and clouds to a timed jump onto the mesh net just right is a bit annoying, but it's doable. So going through this portal gets us to this small section with leaves to climb up to the floating island to then make a big running jump to another portal. I'd also like to mention that there is literally lollipops jutting out of some of the islands. Again, I just love some of these environments. It fits so well. Anyway, after this portal, don't worry, it's the last one, I swear. This area is another horde fight to enter the Grand Wizard's castle. We need to defeat all the bears in this area. I'm gonna be honest, this horde section was a little annoying, but there's this small bug. So I defeated all these stupid bears. So I thought I could use this rainbow to jump to the front gate of the castle, but I was denied. So I looked around, no bears. So I tried again, no dice. Then I looked at the front of the castle. This singular stupid green bear jumped into the front of the castle meaning i could not get to it so i had to use the rainbow to pepper this bastard with my pistol since the shotgun and crossbow can't reach that far your body will remain on the stoop of the castle to be forgotten by time and turned to dust in space where was i oh yeah we need to go into this giant castle and enter through this equally giant gate the wizard must be huge. Okay, he's literally just Navi from Legend of Zelda. God damn it. He demands we go through four different trials to be able to meet him. The first one is the trial of the spirit, where we need to face our fear. Honestly, super easy. Just going through a dark chasm and it's just that. Then you get out. Kind of boring. Oh yeah, there's also this part. <laughs> anyway, the second one is the trial of life where you need to grow this giant tree using four ingredients. You need to dig a hole, put down a bean, put some water on it, and then destroy some planks on the roof to allow sun in for the plant to grow. Then you need to climb this stupid sprout to escape. Climbing it's really annoying with how it's a weird spiral, but then you climb into the light and you're back in the main hall. The third trial is the trial of the arts. In this one, you need to listen to this melody. Then you need to use the bells provided to imitate it. As someone who didn't know that there was four bells, I needed a tutorial. And this is the solution. Huh? 
So yeah, that's this trial. And the last one is the average skinny person snack. And the last one is the average skinny person snack. Or as the wizard calls it, the trial of bravery. I want to be honest, this looks like something I would eat though. I think you can just leave after the first few pieces of meat you eat, but you can just burn yourself in the fireplace to lose health to eat more of the meat. Of course I ate them all. And I just love the comments the wizard makes while you eat. <laughs> Don't insult me, you're the one who said I needed to eat it. Anyway, after this he lifts us to the top of the tower and we meet... The wizard? It's some 4D illusionary Wizard of Oz type thing. But there's no back room with some creepy guy in it with a giant megaphone. At least not one that I could find. The wizard then shows us where our friends are. They've been kidnapped into a factory taken in by an evil bear named Vex. They're being forced to make weapons, and the wizard says that he can't help directly, but he can teleport us there. The wizard teleports us to an underground area where we go up a ladder and see a wasteland around us. An ocean of acid and sandy islands dotted around the factory. Jumping over and past all these areas, we can eventually find our way into this little vault section, where we can find a bunch of industrial pipes to jump around. Going farther, we can find more concrete building sections that are part of the factory and numbered. We see the chasms in this vast area of concrete, and what looks kind of like snow in this mountainous area. We can pass all these giant bridges and wooden catwalks to pass through even more concrete areas. Eventually, we get to this lobby section to walk up to this observation deck and find our bear friends from the beginning. The bears see us and fill us in on their situation of being forced to make ammunition and guns for Vex. They said that they've made a plan, but we need to go to control room 13 to help them get out. They give us a bunch of extra ammo and send us off to find the solution. Going through the door behind us brings us into this cavernous facility that looks like... Oh god, what's this reminding me of? Oh yeah, it's literally just the old area of Aperture Science. For those who don't know or just don't watch my other videos, Aperture Science is the facility in the Valve series Portal. One of the portions in the second game is the old facility that looks a lot like this, more so in design philosophy rather than actually using the assets. Anyway, this section requires a lot of jumping around and using moving mesh to traverse over the chasms. We can also get this new weapon, the bazooka. It's a great weapon to just bombard a bunch of bears. Anyway, look at this cool trick shot I got. Stupid green bear didn't even know what it did. Another thing we can now use is these jumping pads, which allow us to jump across the chasm without having to jump on these stupid mesh squares. Eventually, we need to get this giant bridge down, but in getting it activated, we need to run through a horde of bombarding care bears with guns and military-grade explosives. After running to the end, we can jump into the ramp and jump through these large areas, devoid of enemies and bland. Then we can make our way into the 13th control room. We get the attention of the bears manning it and get rid of him to press the button and release our friends. They start a fight with a bunch of the bears, and we have to run towards an elevator to go down and meet them, now free from their Care Bear Lockheed Martin shackles. Then we get stuck right about when we're going to meet our friends again, and then the bears warn us that there's another monster that we need to fight. Corporate greed. Anyway, going back up the elevator, we end up in this giant platform area and see this horrible thing. This thing is a giant tank that is kind of annoying. It has two cannons on the sides that shoot out rockets, while there's a mortar on the top that shoots out moving bombs. You need to first do enough damage to blow up the sides, then comes stage 2. This stage makes you destroy the top mortar while it becomes more aggressive, and you need to blow it up to get into the tank, and then blow it up again from the inside. After that, we can finally see our bear friends, who come up onto the platform and see us. But the factory is starting to explode, so the bears blow up a ladder to bring it down for us so that we can get into the control room and open the exit for them. After that, they get out safely. Once they're safe, we need to run through a gauntlet of the crumbling facility. We need to scale steel beams and suspended wooden catwalks to safety, and as we run alongside this very long wooden catwalk, we can see giant walls open up to windows that we can escape through. As we try to make our jump through the opening, the screen goes white with the explosion behind us propelling us further. As we black out and regain consciousness, we get this neat cutscene. Oh, <laughs> 
Now, that was a quite rushed explanation compared to what I usually do, but I'd like to go into my comments on the game. I loved this game. This is such a cool source mod because of its incredibly unique style and feel. Everything in this game is a whimsical and colorful mess, and it's beautiful. The art style of this game is so nice. The bears are a little creepy when you look too close at them, but they do fit the environment incredibly well. I felt that the pacing of the story and the story itself was very well implemented into this game, and nothing ever felt unfair or annoying or unfun in this game. Honestly, features like the giant bazooka and bunny hop jump made this game so fun to me. It's ridiculous and I love it. Some of these spots like the bear village and even the mines and snow capped mountains look so nice. The ice cream and lollipops that would just randomly dot spaces in the map added that extra bit of personality. Also, the dumb little mumble they communicate with is so cute, I just love it. The weird design of the wizard's castle is also really nice to me. Now, I did say earlier that this game was mysteriously removed from Steam, with different people getting different answers. So, I tried to do some investigating about what happened in this game, but I couldn't find anyone on YouTube or the Steam community who had a definitive, proven answer. So, I had to do a little bit of deeper investigating. Looking at Steam, the game is under the name Bisonorous Party which I will translate in a bit, as it is important. The dev blog is long dead, and on the ModDB page, there's conflicting dates and things like updating source and Valve software. So, with all this, what did I find? Well, honestly, not much. So, I was almost ready to throw in the towel. I even checked their webpage for the game and found it dead. No activity. So I went to YouTube to find any info on these new maps and screenshots I found from the website, but it was almost a lost cause to me since I wasn't finding anything. Barely any videos on it in any detail. Until I found this weird video titled Bear Party Adventure Nuke. But I've never seen mines in Bear Party Adventure. Looking more into this, this YouTube user was a developer for the game. But this video was years ago, he'll never respond to me. So I tried to get in contact with him, and after a couple days, I was able to get his email. So I wrote up this email and sent him some questions, hoping that I might get some response. And oh boy, did I get a response. I sent him nine questions, relatively detailed, so I can get some more info. And here are his answers. My first question was, who thought of the initial idea of the game, and Clem's response was that it was thought of a long time ago, maybe around 2008 on a web forum for web design and gold source modding named Le Site du Zero, known now as Open Classrooms. They were 16 or 17 at the time of the idea and thought it'd be really funny to make a multiplayer Care Bears game in a style of Unreal Tournament with whatever dumb and offensive stuff they could throw in. The name Bisonors is French for Care Bears, Bear Party Adventure itself was much later. And also, I apologize, I'm probably mispronouncing by Sonors. I don't know. The second question was, when did the game start development and originally release? And I also asked about the Steam situation. They said, it finally started around 2007 or 2008 and released in 2009. The dev team was only about 10 people strong and motivation slowly died out later. The team was entirely different by 2013 when they released the next version due to people going in and out, and the mod got remade with new mechanics, game modes, and features. Clems worked as a level designer for the original game, and worked a bit at this time too. Between 2017 and 19, Clems was somewhat active for math and competitions for single-player Half-Life too. He'd stopped modding for 5 years and then restarted again out of boredom. He found some success in his single-player campaigns and decided to revisit this old mod. Around a year of development passed in this time, and he asked one of his previous programmers to help with some assets. So Clems released pretty much the whole mod with some help from Grigor, the other developer. And that's how we got Bear Party Adventure. The next question of mine was, of course, asking if it was intentional that the health packs looked like bongs. Apparently that was no mistake. There's even supposed to be vodka bottles, and in the original maps there was apparently weed plantations. Grigory made most of the assets to be less offensive, except the bongs. And question 4. 
was asking about if the game was really taken down due to a Care Bear DMCA, like some people thought. The answer? Yeah, it actually was. That was the reason it was renamed to Bear Party Adventure, but it wasn't considered enough, so that's why it had to be taken down. It really was a DMCA strike. Question 5 was asking how they think the game turned out and how they look back on their development. And if they could change or revert something, what would it be? They actually were very proud of the mod, since it was successful on Steam for quite a while apparently. Looking back on development, they think it was pretty good and enjoyed developing the game and making new friends. But only some parts of the level design were not great in their eyes, but nothing substantial. My next question was regarding multiplayer and different maps in the game, and simply, it was an afterthought. The developer didn't think that the original maps were up to snuff, so they just made the main campaign multiplayer. Had they gotten more time, they might have made more substantial improvements. So as of now, I actually don't know what the original maps looked like beyond a few small screenshots that Clems has and that the website has. So some of these maps may be lost to time. My seventh question was regarding its cliffhanger ending, and they say that, yes, there was actually a sequel thought of and planned out but after a month of ideas and programming, Clems lost motivation. They wanted to work on other things like horror games, which they enjoyed a lot more and didn't rule out a sequel. But now he's focusing on real life stuff. After that, I asked how they compare themselves as a level designer then and now, and how much they've improved. My follow-up question was if they still enjoy this work or continue to work in this field in general. Their answer actually surprised me. They hope they improved and are now working under Arcane Studios. So that's pretty impressive to me. Some of the original team members are also at Arcane, and one of them is actually working at Valve. They also worked on some other Half-Life 2 maps in between. One named the Temple, and the other is the Travelers. I think I may actually look at these maps in the future just to check out some more source maps and mods. So I'll have to remember these mapping competitions that they sent me. They might be in a future stream, I don't know. They told me they've been working with Source for 15 years now and still have an affection for it. They also say that they've made multiple other maps and mods that just never quite went anywhere, but still enjoy their work. My last question was about any other memories, ideas, or comments about the game's history. They told me how their art style was actually inspired a bit by TF2 after watching its original trailers. Since, of course, they thought of this idea in like 2008-2007, which was when TF2 came out. They told me how they just put all of Half-Life 2's original textures through a Photoshop filter, and used that with weapons straight out of Worms 2. The bunny hop system was also just a physics bug, but they thought it was fun so they kept it in. Another thing is that the dumb audio for the bears is actually from a YouTube video of some guy making dumb voices and faces, and they thought it was funny so they used it. He didn't link the video, but it's funny regardless. The OST of the game is actually used from a canned project that another developer on the project made for a different campaign they were working on. However, it didn't work out so they used it for this game. He also has one last message to the players and fans of the game, which I'll read in its entirety. I'm getting a lot of messages from people wondering why the game disappeared from Steam, and asking if they'll ever get a sequel. I never have the strength to answer them, so I'm sorry for that. But I read all of them, and they make my day every time, so thank you. Well, thank you, Clems, for giving us such an amazing source mod. And to the fans and players, we have our answer. We know what happened, and we know that the developer still cares. I'd appreciate if no one goes out of their way to contact the developer because I don't think they'd want a bunch of emails asking questions, so I tried to get all the common questions I saw out of the way. Clems, I hope you're watching. Thank you for this incredible game, and thank you also for allowing me the interview. Because I'm glad I could reach out to you and help people find out what's really happened with this game. Anyway, that was Bear Party Adventure, a game through legal turmoil made by some young guys who thought that Care Bears doing crack would be funny. And it was. It's a beautifully unique source game experience that I will always keep in my Steam library. Anyway, I'd just like to take this last few moments to mention my streams. Yes, I know I will be mentioning them constantly for probably a couple of videos. I still don't have a consistent stream schedule set up for myself, so but I'll try to schedule them as far in advance as physically possible for me. Anyway, that's about it. Thank you all so much uh, for almost 5,000 subscribers. Probably by the time this video comes out, there will be 5,000 subscribers. And uh, for the 5,000 subscriber special, um, obviously since it hasn't happened yet, 
there will be a stream playing fun times at homers three not looking forward to that but as always comments criticism and suggestions will always be welcome thank you everyone for watching it's been me moosh i'll see you later arrivederci